Well, it's good to see you today. Thank you for tuning in. I'm open in my Bible to today's reading, which comes from John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Today is Wednesday, February the 24th, and our reading is from John 9, and it goes on into John chapter 10 today. It goes through first uh, through verse 21 of chapter 10, but we're going to talk just from, from John chapter 9 uh, in, this, in this Bible study. This chapter uh, is, is an interesting chapter, and it is one that is, is very indicting of the Jews and the Pharisees who, who were, yet again, after Jesus, trying to uh, discredit him and trying to uh, push him aside because they did not like the things that he was saying or doing. You know, we have our senses. We have our five main senses. We can see, smell, taste, hear, and touch. And if you ever thought about this question, if you had to do without one of those senses, which one would it be? And your answer might be different than mine or from somebody else's. But in John chapter 9, we have a man who was blind. And so he lived without one of those main senses. And this man was, was known by everybody to be blind. Chapter 9 and verse 1 says, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Their question is interesting. Whose fault is it that this man was born this way? Now, I, the, the question, the premise of the question is wrong, and Jesus deals with that in the next few verses. He says, it was neither that this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. This is an interesting response. That's a bad idea, Jesus says. It, it's not that he sinned. Of course not. He, he's a newborn baby. How, how could he be guilty of sin? And it's not that his parents sinned and that this is some kind of, you know, retribution or payback. You know, this is some kind of bad karma or something like that. It, it's not that at all. Sometimes these things just happen. Sometimes these bad things happen, and there's no real good explanation for it. But Jesus does give a good explanation for it here. He says that the works of God should be revealed in him. Jesus is planning something great through this man. Jesus is going to he knows, now that not, no, one, no one else knows, but Jesus is going to reveal the power of God through this man's blindness. Years ago, when I was in school, uh, in high school, I did, um, I did a lot of work with the special ed kids in our school. And my senior year of high school, I was commissioned to do a project for the senior, uh, or for the special ed kids, rather. Um, they needed their classroom redesigned. It was too small, it wasn't functional, and they were, they had received a grant from the state to purchase some equipment, some lifts and chair lifts and that, that, that kind of thing to help these these special ed children. And I, I knew these kids. I worked with them a lot. And they asked me if I would draw up on AutoCAD program a new classroom for them. And so that was a big project for me that year. I got to redesign their classroom and, and draw out a floor plan. And so I got to spend a lot of time with these students. And you know, it's, a, it's an awful thing in our world that people who are um, disabled in, in some way or, or mentally disabled, you know, oftentimes they're the brunt of people's jokes and criticism. And that just infuriates me 
uh, as, it, as it should all people. We all uh, should be just repulsed at that kind of behavior. But I'll never forget the experiences that I had with those students. They, they changed my life. Um, in, in, and that's, I know that's a, a big thing to say, but it really is true. I mean, there were kids in, in this class who had some of the most severe types of um, deficiencies or deformities or handicaps that you can imagine. And yet, every day, you know, they were smiling and they were happy and, and you know, they, they, they knew they had, they had struggles and they had difficulties, M mobility difficulties or, or mental difficulties. They knew that. And yet that didn't stop them from being uh, bright and, and happy and having good spirits and so forth. Why am I talking about all this? I'm talking about this to, to make this point. Jesus said about this blind man, that God will reveal his work, his power, through this blind man. Now, what that means in this text is Jesus is going to perform a miracle and prove that God's power is on display in the person of Jesus. But I just want to make a side point here that's related. Sometimes God displays his goodness and his power in other ways, too. And I think that those special ed students that I was privileged to work with, I think God was revealing his power through them too. Not in a miraculous kind of a way. That's not what I'm saying at all. But showing me someone who was healthy and athletic and strong and smart and all, I mean, I had everything that those kids did not. And yet, those kids taught me a lot. They taught me something. Every life is precious and valuable. And, and, and God, I, I truly believe, God uses people like that to have an, a, an effect for good in this world for people like me who needed it. And so I, I'm thankful to God for that experience and what it taught me because God's power was on display through those kids. But Jesus here knows what he's going to do. And so he tells this man in verse 7, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So Jesus spits on the ground in verse 6, and he takes the dirt, and he makes this clay, and he puts it on this man's eyes and says, go wash your face in the pool of Siloam. And the man does that in verse 7, and it says that he came back seeing. Now, all of the people see this. Verse 8, the neighbors and those who had previously seen that he was blind said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Is that not the same guy? And some said, Yes, it is. Others said, Well, no, he, he, he's like him. You know, they look similar, but it's not the same person. But he said... Verse 9, I am he. I am that person. Yes, I am that person that you think that I am. And so they said in verse 10, how were your eyes opened? Verse 11, he said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So I went and washed and I received sight. And they said, where is he? He said, I don't know. Okay, some guy named Jesus gave me this instruction. Come back to that in a minute. Verse 13, so the people bring him who was formerly blind to the Pharisees. Now, it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Well, here we go. You know where this is going, right? It was a Sabbath. If Jesus so much as breathes on the Sabbath, the Pharisees get all upset about it. They get all bent out of shape, right? So the Pharisees then, in verse 15, they ask the man, how did you receive your sight? He said, he put clay on my eyes and I washed. And I see. And therefore, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. So Jesus went out and made a mud pie in the dirt and put it on this man's face. And the Pharisees were like, Oh, he broke the Sabbath. Really? Really? That's, that's the argument you're going to make? I mean, think about how small that is in comparison to what big thing Jesus has just done. 
He cured a man from blindness. I mean, that's huge. Well, yeah, but he played in the dirt on the Sabbath. So, come on, right? Okay, so the story continues. They said to the blind man, verse 17, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. What do you know about this Jesus fellow? Now, remember, in verse 11, he said, a man called Jesus. I mean, you get the impression he's a, he's a total stranger. I don't know who he is. He's some guy named Jesus. But now, in verse 17, he said, he is a prophet. Well, now he has a different estimation of who Jesus is. But, verse 18, the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received. Uh, okay, obviously, you were not actually healed. I mean, maybe there's some kind of, you know, some kind of shenanigan going on here. This is obviously not what it appears to be. There has to be some other explanation of this. And so they asked the parents, is this your son? Verse 19, you, you say he was born blind. How, how does he see now? Is, is this really your son? Explain this. And the parents said, we know that this is our son. We know that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He can speak for himself. Yeah, that, that's our son. Yes, he was born blind. I have no idea what happened. He's an adult. Talk to him. So, Verse 22, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. Well, we, don't, we don't know. Sorry, can't help you. Go talk to him. So, verse 24, they again called the blind man, or the man who was blind, and said, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. This man, Jesus, is not the one who healed you. He's a sinner. He played in the dirt on the Sabbath. He broke God's commandment. Therefore, he cannot be from God. Who really healed you? Tell us the truth. And so Jesus, or excuse me, the, the man who was blind, in verse 25, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. But one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. And this just continues, right? The Pharisees ask, he responds, they don't believe it, so they ask again, he responds, they don't believe it. This whole thing just continues. Now, look at verse 34. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins and you are teaching us? And they cast him out. We're done. You know, we're not getting anywhere with you. You're a sinner. You're a despicable sinner. You, 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 you belong over there with those tax collectors, and, and, and you, you just need to leave. You're, you're going to tell us what we should think about this situation? Get out of here. So they dismiss it. So then verse 35 says that Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, pause, think about that for a moment, this man has been cast out. He's been excommunicated. And Jesus hears about it and goes and finds him. Isn't that what Jesus was often doing? Seeking out those who were cast out. I think there's something for us to think about in that. The fact that this man was cast out Think about the contrast with the man's parents. They knew what the, what the Jews were going to do. Well, if, if we give any support to this Jesus figure, they're, they're going to get rid of us. They're going to cast us out. We're, we're going to be ostracized. No worry for Jesus. He deliberately sought out the people who were ostracized and the people who were marginalized. It's something for us to think about. He said to him, verse 35, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. And then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. 
Notice how all of this began for this man. Now, some man named Jesus, I don't know much about him, but he healed me. Well, maybe he's a prophet, he said to the Jews. I, I think he's a prophet. So his estimation of Jesus is risen now. And now he believes Jesus is the Son of God. This man was not only cured of physical blindness. This man became spiritually aware as well. You know, his, his physical eyes were open. He became aware of his surroundings. He saw colors for the first time and the trees and the, and the dirt and, I mean, you know, all of it. Think about how amazing that would have been. But even more amazing than that is the spiritual vision that he received. But in contrast to him, you have these Pharisees, the ones who, spiritually speaking, should have had extremely good vision. And they, they had the law, and they knew it backwards and forwards. And they were the teachers. They were in the positions of influence and religious uh, influence and power. I mean, they had it all. And what we see with them is they become increasingly blind throughout this whole episode. Verse 39, Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. That is what is happening in this chapter. A man who could not see now can in two ways, and those who can see are being made blind. And the Pharisees got it. They understood the point he was making. Verse 40, some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? You're talking about us, aren't you? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remains. You think you've got it all figured out. Therefore, your sin remains. If you were truly blind and ignorant, You'd be like this man, this blind man, who was physically blind, and now he sees clearer than any of you. He sees clearly with his physical eyes, but even more important than that, he sees clearly with his spiritual eyes. But you, you think you see. You think your spiritual eyes are clear. But in reality, you are desperately blind because you cannot see the obvious work of God being displayed through me. That's John chapter 9. Thanks for reading with me today.